I've got four DC motors. I'm powering them from a 3.7 volt lithium ion battery. Um, drive them in random directions for random periods of time. And uh, it's all done very easily from uh, a couple of driver ICs. So if I take a look at the circuit which I'm using to drive these. So the circuit is very simple. Uh, it's two of these uh, driver ICs on each side. Uh, and each of these is an L293D. Uh, and it can drive um, currents through two, two directions through uh, a motor. And so it can reverse the motor's direction. And in the middle I've got a pick my controller which I'm using to drive them. The, the actual ICs themselves can actually take TTL input. So you can drive them directly from a, an output pin of a microcontroller or something like a Raspberry Pi. And um, and it can drive a different voltage. So, so you've got lo the logic voltage on the pick and then it, you can have a motor voltage and the logic voltage on the driver chip. So you can drive uh, different um, powered motors to, to what you're driving the logic. Uh, and the uh, the input pins um, drive or, or dictate what um, what way the current goes through the actual motor. But I'll actually explain that uh, in a little while. So this is the L293D and in the actual uh, chip, so this is a, a single integrated circuit, you've got two actual drive-in circuits. So you can actually drive two DC motors from the one integrated circuit. And on, on the left here you can see the inputs for one of the motors um, and the output up here for for going into the motor. Uh, so these these two wires just wire directly in, into a motor. So if I just give an example, you would just connect the coil of a motor across those two pins. And depending on how you actually control the inputs will depend on how the motor rotates. So in the middle we've got an enable um, pin. So this is very simple. All it does is it switches the motor on or off. Uh, and it, it doesn't matter what's on the other two inputs for that particular motor. It will either um, turn the power on or off to the motor. Um, uh, and the actual combination of in one and in two um, control the actual how the motor is driven. So a low on in one will put, uh, make a low voltage on the output for pin one of the output. And a low on the input two will make a low on the output for number two. Uh, so if you have, have them both at, at low, of course the motor won't drive at all because both it will have ground on each side of the motor. And the same with uh, if you raise them both to high. So if you make in one high, it puts the driving voltage on onto the output of um, pin one output. And if you make this pin too high as well, well then they'll both be high and it won't drive the motor. So you're only driving the motor when you've got a difference on two pin input pins. So if you had this one low and you have a low output there and this one high you have a high output here it drives the motor in one direction uh, whereas if you reverse that and you have this one high and that one low then in the um, motor will drive in the opposite direction so it's very easy to control the motor um, so and you can switch the motor off either by disabling it or by making the input one and input two the same same value it's probably neat as just to, to use the enable but if you're um, pressed for how many IO pins you've got then you can ignore enable one pin and just use the, the in, two inputs to control the motor and then you can uh, turn it on and off and the um, change the direction you want it to, tra uh, to travel in. So the the other thing to, to look at is the these got um, clamping diodes inside uh, the integrated circuit so actually across the motor you don't need the the diodes you might normally have to, re um, to prevent reverse currents so they're all integral in the integrated circuit. So you can use the integrated circuit with very few external components. So the only other thing is um, changing the speed of the, the motor. So the way I've done this is I've kept, say, the input um, two as, as zero volts. Uh, and then for input one, I use a pulse width modulation to change the, um, the speed of the, the motor. So when input one is low, uh, it will be at the same voltage as input two, and, and it won't drive the motor at all. And when it's high, uh, it will start driving the motor. Um, and if you want to drive it in the opposite direction, then you do the same, but with the opposite pins. Uh, and for as, for as long as you have it high, 
it, what's important is the mark space ratio. So the ratio of how, how long it is high to how long it is low. So the longer it is high, the faster the motor will go and the less it is low. But if you want this to slow the motor down, make the high a shorter a period and make the low a longer period, you need to do that at a reasonably uh, fast frequency because if you, if you do it too low, then the motor will sort of judder. Uh, so you want to sort of change this uh, ratio of the high to low at a fairly uh, large frequency so that it's, well, you get the control of the speed, but you don't get juddering. And also that keeps the torque of the motor up even at lower speeds.